at West System International's UK headquarters, a team of Italian boat builders has arrived to learn about vacuum infusion. Under expert tuition, they will be creating a 13-foot canoe in a specially prepared mould using the ProSet range of infusion epoxy. Here are the key steps involved to create a basic hull moulding ready for fitting out. The canoe mould is prepared with three coats of release wax, each one polished hard to partly melt and spread each layer thinly. So we're looking at getting a very, very thin layer of wax over the entire surface of the mould tool. And a sponge is the perfect thing to apply that with because it turns the wax into a more liquid consistency and allows you to cover every single square millimetre. Waxing complete, the first of two layers of biaxial cloth is rolled out over the mould, ensuring there is enough overlap for trimming. Could we uh, get the electric scissors plugged in, please? The cloth is then lifted up and draped into the mould. And you may have noticed there was no gel coat applied first. There's no gel coat, no gel coat here. This is one of the beauties of the infusion process, is you get uh, really, really good um, dispersion of the resin via the vacuum. So without a gel coat, we're going to paint this or lacquer it, so a gel coat is unnecessary on this canoe. <laughs> so can you see how I've looked, defined the centre look? I've got, I've got the centre here and I've got the two edges. Can you see that? Very carefully, the edges are trimmed to about 15 millimetres from the outside of the mould. This is to allow the vacuum bag sealant tape to attach to the flange. The second layer of cloth is dropped into place. The bow and stern are then tidied up with cuts into the fabric so it sits neatly in the mould. Lengths of 100mm reinforcing cloth are placed in the bow and stern and at regular intervals across the hull to provide extra stiffening. These transverse reinforcements are then cut in the middle and slightly overlapped so they can move outwards. If you can imagine these are in one piece like that, as the bag comes down it, it will be impossible to, oh, to pull that in. A small piece of tape holds them in place. At this stage, bagging tape is attached to the edges of the flange, but with the top protective paper still in place. Another layer of 100mm reinforcing tape is added to each gunnel, making a complete ribcage of extra strength. Next to be draped in is a layer of peel ply, which is measured out, cut in half, and overlapped in the middle to allow it to slide and settle under vacuum. Like the reinforcements, it is also taped into place. The manifold cord that will remove the air evenly is fitted with its T-junctions and then placed around the edge of the flange. It is held down with small tabs of vacuum tape. The next layer is the plastic mesh that will allow the resin to move easily and consistently through the fabric. It's actually called the distribution mesh, but if you flick it up there, look, the really nice thing is it incorporates the release film. And getting the release film in on its own is a really difficult job. Then getting the mesh on top of that is really fiddly. But then the two combined are just brilliant together, absolutely brilliant. The mesh doesn't drape easily, but strategic cuts along its outer edge make it more flexible. Three cuts each side and two a piece in the bound stern are usually enough. Now the mesh is trimmed to a critical point below the gunnel, a line marked with a pen and a line David has been modifying with each canoe. The last thing we want is for the, for the, the system to steal a lot of resin from the work. So that's why we cut it at this point. And progressively, as we make more of these, we started off 
here. Okay. Every time we've made one, we've gone lower and lower and lower. Okay. Yeah. With the mesh cut short, the next job is to attach the spiral epoxy delivery hose along the centre line. It is fed right up to both ends of the hull and fitted with a T-piece, to which the epoxy pipe will connect. The clear polythene vacuum bag is laid over the top of the mould and cut with about one metre of overlap at each end. Large pleats are made at each end of the mould by taping two sides of a fold to each other and then sticking the resulting pleat onto the freshly exposed bag tape. Further pleats are made at regular intervals along the flange, allowing plenty of slack for the bag to collapse completely into the mould. The final job is to pierce the airline junction through the edge of the bag at the centre on both sides and make an airtight seal around its base with bag tape. The bag is connected to the vacuum pump via a catch pot, a reservoir that prevents resin from being pushed into the pump itself. The pump is then switched on to allow the full vacuum to develop, pulling the bag down into the mould. The pump is then turned off so the team can listen for the hiss of leaking air. Everything now should become very quiet and we can possibly hear... Yeah, we have a leak. We have a leak there, yeah? This will give you a surprisingly good idea where a leak is, if you've identified it with your ears beforehand. Yeah? With the vacuum running again, the epoxy delivery point is pierced through the bag and the polythene resealed around it. The delivery pipe is fitted with a tap and firmly connected to the T-piece. The delivery pickup tube is taped to a rigid pole so it can sit at the bottom of the epoxy bucket. The ProSet Infusion Epoxy Resin is thoroughly mixed with its hardener in the ratio described in the data sheet. The mix is then decanted into the reservoir bucket. The vacuum pump is started and the epoxy halted at the tap before atmospheric pressure can force, not suck, the resin into the mould. It's the, the air weight that is acting on the top of the head of resin that's propelling it in. It's not being sucked in, it's being pushed in, in fact. Yeah, pushed in. A last check for leaks, and it's time to infuse. OK. As the tap is opened and the resin begins to spread out, David times its progress and marks the resin front. This will give an idea of how long the infusion will take. So that's 10 seconds. 20 seconds. 30 seconds. Can you see we've got about a 10 second gap between the resin front and the darker part of the laminate? That's really where the resin is flowing across the top of the mesh, this is where it's actually filling and infusing the laminate. The progress of the resin front is continually monitored and more mixed epoxy added to the bucket as necessary. Totals can be calculated in advance. Once the epoxy has reached the edge of the gunnel, the pipe is pulled from the reservoir and the last amount in the tube is driven into the mould. It's probably necessary to run the vacuum on a part such as this for a minimum of two hours. But on much larger parts, you'd want to draw the vacuum overnight to ensure you've purged all of the atmospheric air from, uh, from inside the laminate stack. The mould is a sandwich of channels, a sample of which is seen here and these allow hot water from this portable heater and pump to circulate freely through the core to achieve the post-cure. With the moulding now fully post-cured, the bag and mesh are removed. This can be quite a time-consuming process with little opportunity for recycling the materials. 
the moulding may need to be prized out of the mould using wedges. On very large mouldings, water is pumped in under pressure to achieve separation. The peel ply can be removed in situ, or once the moulding is released. It leaves a roughened surface as an ideal key for any further epoxy work, fairing or painting. So bear in mind that this uh, two-day skills seminar for process epoxies is intended for the professional end user or technician. But there's no reason that uh, the amateur boat builder or the amateur composites uh, enthusiast cannot access uh, the ProSet products. The best source of contact will be ourselves first, but they are available in small quantities for small projects, but they do deliver where low viscosity and longer working times are necessary compared with our West System epoxy product. Of course, high-end composites could be built with West System, but ProSet just delivers that little bit more sophistication to your processing. And we look here at this Canadian canoe that has been released earlier. We can see the exquisite finish and the light weight of this epoxy glass infused component.